Hello mate, welcome to this another Let's Render video. In this video I am actually creating an entirely new scene uh, and this is for obviously the game that I'm working on. And essentially what's happening in this scene is that the main character, the player character, is tracking somebody and he's tracked him to this scene here. So what I need to do is uh, adjust the render settings, put the character actually in the scene so that we can get a kind of over the shoulder camera look and essentially render this scene out so that um, we can utilize it in our game as a I suppose it's going to be a background image but it's going to have clickable elements like most of the images that I've rendered so far so what I, first thing I need to do is obviously bring the character into the scene and I'm going to move the camera around and I might remove some parts from the scene I might add some parts to this scene it's really just going to be a kind of uh, another organic render it's just going to kind of happen as it happens the only thing that's set in stone really is the scene that i'm going to be using so let's just start off i'm going to first things first bring my character into the scene so i've got to obviously go to there and then i shall double click on him and bring him into the scene that might take a moment so bear with me there we go so we've got our player character into the scene so now i'm just going to lift uh, myself up a little bit um, I'm not actually in the camera at the moment, so I can just move the camera to his shoulder or vice versa. I'm actually going to do this with him. It doesn't really matter what pose he's in because the camera's going to be looking directly over his shoulder. So I can afford to just have him in the standard T pose for now. And then just bring him back into the camera a little bit more because we really only want to see over his shoulder. We don't want actually any of him to be so I reckon probably somewhere in that vicinity if we go back to our camera yeah so there we go we've got our over the shoulder camera shot and maybe move the camera a smidge across just there we don't want him taking up too much of the frame so now I can change that so that now I can select elements that I want to keep and I want to remove um, I don't really care for that road sign although i suspect that it's going to be blurred out so i'm actually gonna change that again i'm actually gonna un make him unselectable as well so that he i don't accidentally select him and do something with him so now i can go back into perspective view mode now what i also want to add into the scene is a car of the person that he's tracking so i'm going to go into my smart content into my files look under transportation land transportation i actually have to unselect the character in order for all of the options to appear and then i've just got to find the car that i have used in previous scenes just got to remember which bloody one it is it's always a bit of a challenge and i believe it is uh, this one so we'll give that a moment to load in as well and then that should appear around about there yeah that's fine cool so now we can move that into a slightly better position because it's going to be up up the road basically and we want to rotate it 90 degrees so that it's actually facing away from us and then we'll put it so that it's parked on the side of the roads i know that's probably illegal in this part of the world but such is life so what i need to do now is i need to swing myself over here and i'm going to select the camera because the camera is going to have depth of field it's going to have a fairly broad focal range but I want the car to be definitely part of that focal range so we're going to select our depth of field arm and we're going to change our focal length focal distance we're going to create a massive bracket there as you can see it expands the further away you go so we're zooming out and we're just doing that and then what I want to do is get a really good bird's eye view because I want there to be a reasonably healthy depth of field effect so bring that oh gone a bit too far then don't want it to be minus so as you can see because we're zoomed out such a long way um you know the the focal distance or rather because our focal distance is so far away from the camera um the tiniest little adjustment to f-stop makes a huge adjustment to the actual focal distance so i'm going to go with something in that region go back to our camera and we can see that the car's there from this shot if we go into our nvidia iRemote mode now we can get a 
good idea of what we're going to be looking at in terms of how in focus and out of focus certain things are going to be and then we can tweak our depth of field as much as we need to it's going to take a moment here here we go having a bit of a think and as we can see now we've got a pretty good looking render so far i think maybe we can afford to go a little bit wider on the f-stop because i think his actual shoulder is perhaps a little bit too out of focus so i'm going to try f12 see what happens there still a little bit too out of focus let's try f14 just jumping up in two two uh, f-stop increments i'm gonna try uh, let's try f18 see what happens there we, we you know we we are quite close to him so there is going to be a little bit of adjustment but i think that's probably a slightly healthier uh, looking f-stop there and then i can tweak the colors and the adjustments in these buildings to make them look a little bit different if I want to or I can remove them and replace them with other buildings if I want to it's neither here nor there really so now we've got that but I feel like this scene is missing some life I think this looks like a deserted street at the moment and I think that realistically in the game they live in a fairly well-to-do area so I think there's going to be some people around so I'm going to pop these guys into the actual scene. That'll take a minute because that studio takes a minute to do everything. So we'll just quickly close that group down eventually. Let it have its think. There we go, right, cool. Now, so I can switch back out of NVIDIA IRO mode there to texture shaded mode. And then I can jump out of my camera into perspective view that way. We can add some, I think I'm going to add some billboards into the scene. So I have to actually search for billboards in my content folder. And this one looks quite good. And you can get these billboards from all over the place really, but these guys are going to be over there walking towards the camera. And then I think perhaps further down the street because there is a beach in this scene that is down the far end so I think I need to, to excuse the speed that the mouse controls the camera it's very slow cool right so I think if I were to have somebody perhaps walking in some kind of beachwear standing in beachwear man smoking billboard would work and now we can slide this guy all the way back there oh I appear to have accidentally so if we set the camera on him we can see it's actually I may have actually moved the wrong axis there it's not a problem though so we want him to be stood at the end of the street in this kind of little area here and then if I center on him one last time and if I were to click on that various different options there move to floor is control d there we go boom moved him to the floor and if i zoom in on him again yeah we're good okay so if i jump back to my camera now there's just it doesn't have to be hundreds and hundreds of people it's just got to be a couple of people that add a little bit of life to the scene so now i've got those i can you run the Orient Billboard script for this particular product. So I'm just going to move that off screen so that I can actually, that's actually pointed the wrong way. Just got to get the right script. Yeah, that's fine. That's what we want. Cool. Now then, if we were to run the NVIDIA IRA mode again, and we will see whether or not this actually looks realistic or not. It should look better. But you can see it looks a bit weird with billboards in the scene, but they just use so much less memory than actual characters that it's just daft to put real characters in the scene unless you, if you can avoid it. So there we go. Now you can see got a couple of people in the scene and I can actually change the angle of some of these as well because of the products that we're using so I can just double click that one and I can have them 
Oh, that's probably too much. We want to change them to about there. So it looks like they're actually walking up the pavement and not walking straight towards the character. Perfect. All right, so I think that's pretty much ready to render at this point. So I'm going to do that and then I will jump back in once that's done. Alrighty, so here we are. Got the render in Photoshop, so I'm just going to do a little bit of quick post, really. It's a little bit grainy around here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy that and then in Filter Noise, I'm just going to go to Despeckle and then I'm actually going to apply a layer mask and invert it. Then using my brush tool, 50-50 on flow and opacity and then I'm just going to make sure I've got white and then I'm just going to, where I think it looks really grainy, I'm just going to paint over it a bit just to take some of that away and it's really mainly the back of the main character's head that's the problem. The rest of the scene doesn't look too bad but there is a little bit over there. Hard for you guys to see I know but there's a bit there so I'm just basically thinning that down a little bit. There's quite a lot of light in the scene but very little bloom so I'm going to stamp visible then I'm going to go to layer image apologies image adjustments threshold and just like I showed you before I'm going to bring this right down hit OK there I'm going to switch this to screen mode and then apply blur to this so filter blur I'm just going to go with a Gaussian blur bring up a reasonable amount there like that then I can adjust the opacity a little bit and then I think there's kind of needs to be a bit of a slightly pinky hue to this so I'm actually going to double click on this again and I'm going to go to color overlay and as you can see it's had a black a lot there so I'm actually just going to go to that and that doesn't really work for me I, st I tell a light so I'm going to undo that I'm going to cancel that that's fine and then what I can actually do is go to adjustments and I'm going to go to replace color. We can select white, which is something around there. Like that. And then I can change the resulting color. I'm just going to add a slightly pink hue to it. Let's see what that does. There we go. Very, very subtle, but it does make a slight difference there. Just adds a little bit more color to the scene. And then I'm actually going to create a new layer. I'm going to go again with a slightly pinky, maybe slightly more to the orange. And then I'm just going to dab a couple of times around that building since it is very bright over there with that light. And that just looks a little bit better. Just bring that opacity down a smidge. Just make it look nice and bright. Happy days. And then I think because of the amount of light that's coming over there, I think we're going to go with a really, really faint lens blur just across there just like that so that's red and that's green and that's blue and I'm going to switch that to soft light and then drop the opacity right down so that it's barely visible looks good okay so I think that about wraps it up for that picture uh, I hope you enjoyed that let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one but until then see you later guys bye bye